With mineralocorticoids, corticoids refers to the steroid hormones produced by the adrenal cortex, and mineral refers to how these hormones regulate sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion in the distal convoluted and collecting tubules of the kidney. Aldosterone is the major natural mineralocorticoid in humans, and there are two major classes of medications targeting the actions of mineralocorticoids. Mineralocorticoid receptor agonists, which mimic the role of aldosterone, and mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists that block the action of aldosterone. All right, but first things first. Aldosterone is part of a hormone family, or axis, that works together and is called the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Normally, when the blood pressure is low, the kidney gets less blood, which causes it to release renin into the blood. Renin converts a prohormone called angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1, and another enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has many effects, like causing vasoconstriction and stimulating the release of antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary glands. In the adrenal glands, it triggers the secretion of aldosterone. In the kidneys, aldosterone affects two types of cells along the distal, convoluted, and collecting tubule of the nephron. First, it binds to mineralocorticoid receptors in the cytoplasm of principal cells, forming an aldosterone receptor complex. This complex is translocated to the nucleus of the cell, where it enhances gene expression of epithelial sodium channels, ENAC, and sodium-potassium ion pumps. Eventually, this leads to their increased synthesis, and as a result, there are more of them being present on the principal cell. Now, epithelial sodium channels are located on the apical membrane, and they enable sodium to exit the filtered urine by entering the principal cells. In addition, sodium-potassium ion pumps, which are located on the basolateral membrane, drive sodium from the cell into the blood, which allows more sodium to flow from the tubule into the cell down its concentration gradient. Since water often flows with sodium through a process of osmosis, water also moves into the blood, which increases blood volume and therefore blood pressure. At the same time, the pumps drive potassium in the opposite direction, from the blood into the cells, and from there it flows down its concentration gradient into the tubule to be excreted as urine. The other function of aldosterone is to stimulate the proton pumps, H plus ATPase pumps, in alpha intercalated cells, which causes more protons to get excreted into the urine and make it more acidic. In other words, aldosterone causes a decrease in urine pH. Meanwhile, ion exchangers on the basal surface of the cell move the negatively charged bicarbonate ion into the extracellular space, causing an increase in blood pH. Now, mineralocorticoid receptor agonists are used to treat pathological conditions where the mineralocorticoid level in the body is lower than normal. For example, primary adrenal insufficiency, also known as Addison's disease, is a rare endocrine disorder that happens when the adrenal gland isn't able to produce enough of the hormones that the body needs, particularly aldosterone and cortisol. The reason it's called primary is that the underlying problem is due to damage to the adrenal glands themselves. Another cause of mineralocorticoid insufficiency is congenital adrenal hyperplasia, a disease where there are enlarged adrenal glands that are present at birth, and the reason for the adrenal enlargement is that there's a deficiency in an enzyme involved with steroid production. Now, mineralocorticoid agonists such as fludrocortisone can be taken orally to treat conditions where mineralocorticoid levels are low, like Addison's disease and severe congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Because of its long duration of action, approximately 8 to 12 hours, fludrocortisone is also favored for replacement therapy after adrenalectomy. Since it causes sodium and water reabsorption, it can be used to treat conditions that are associated with low blood pressure, such as idiopathic orthostatic hypotension and septic shock that is unresponsive to volume resuscitation or vasopressors. It's important to note that fludrocortisone acts as a strong agonist at mineralocorticoid receptors, but it also causes moderate activation of glucocorticoid receptors. Now, switching gears and moving on to side effects. Since fludrocortisone causes sodium and water reabsorption, individuals on fludrocortisone might end up with fluid retention, hypertension, or even edema, where fluid builds up in the body's tissues, exacerbating pre-existing heart failure. Other side effects include increased loss of potassium, or hypokalemia, and hyperglycemia. 
It's important to note that high doses of mineralocorticoid receptor agonists are associated with myopathy and adrenal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis suppression. Finally, by stimulating glucocorticoid receptors, these individuals can get iatrogenic Cushing syndrome. Symptoms include obesity, where the extra adipose tissue tends to build up between the shoulders, leading to a buffalo hump, in the trunk, causing truncal obesity, and in the face, causing moon facies. Hyperglycemia and diabetes often result from the increased gluconeogenesis and insulin resistance. Muscle weakness and skin stretch marks can occur due to protein breakdown. Hypertension, osteoporosis, and increased risk of bacterial and fungal infections are also common problems caused by excessive cortisol. Now, in contrast to mineralocorticoid receptor agonists, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists are used in conditions where we want to antagonize the effects of aldosterone. Common medications in this group include aplerinone and spironolactone, which are typically taken orally. These medications compete with aldosterone for receptor sites in distal convoluted tubules, thereby increasing sodium and water loss through the urine. This leads to decreased plasma volume and cardiac output and eventual lower blood pressure. At the same time, they prevent potassium loss, thus they are also known as potassium-sparing diuretics. Now, common conditions that are treated with mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists include hypertension or high blood pressure, and edematous states like pulmonary edema or ascites, where fluid builds up in the extracellular space. Also, they have been proven to reduce mortality after a myocardial infarction, presumably because they reduce the rate of remodeling in the heart. Another condition where we want to antagonize the effects of aldosterone is hyperaldosteronism. Hyperaldosteronism can be primary, meaning too much aldosterone is secreted by the adrenal cortex itself, or secondary, when high levels of aldosterone results from the activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Finally, spironolactone can also bind to androgen receptors and prevent testosterone from binding. This makes it useful for blunting the effects of testosterone in the body, like in polycystic ovarian syndrome where there are many cysts on the ovaries that secrete excess testosterone. This can result in symptoms like infertility, hair loss, acne, and hirsutism, or unwanted facial hair growth. Alright, let's move on to side effects. Since these medications spare potassium, there's a risk for hyperkalemia, or too much potassium building up in the blood, which is especially common in individuals with diabetes or renal impairment. Moreover, high blood levels of potassium can lead to life-threatening arrhythmias. Because of this, these medications should never be given with potassium supplements or other medications that could increase potassium, like ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Since they also block the function of proton pumps in alpha intercalated cells, these medications can cause a buildup of hydrogen ions in the blood, which can lower blood pH and cause metabolic acidosis. Very rarely, spironolactone can cause anti-androgenic side effects like gynecomastia or the development of breasts in men and impotence. Now, let's make a simple and fun mnemonic that'll help you efficiently memorize these farm facts about mineralocorticoid receptor agonists and antagonists. So, let's start in a junkyard. We can put the agonists on the left and antagonists on the right side of the scene. So, on the agonist side, let's have a boy who took some spare parts and built a flying drone for fludrocortisone. For indications, there's his father, Thomas Edison, who represents Addison's disease, and he's holding a large, adrenal gland-shaped light bulb to represent congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Next to him, there's a giant bacteria trying to eat a car battery and getting zapped. This represents septic shock. Finally, a napping worker who heard the commotion, stood up too quickly and felt faint, representing orthostatic hypotension. For side effects, instead of a dog, there's a buffalo guarding the junkyard. It represents the buffalo hump commonly associated with Cushing syndrome. To chase off the intruders, it's about to throw a water balloon representing edema at the father and son. The buffalo's owner is a very muscular man, but the muscles in his arms are wasting away, and this should help you remember myopathy. He's holding an axe and chopping the stalk off of a pituitary gland to represent suppression of the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Finally, he's wearing a blood pressure cuff like a belt that's too tight, which represents hypertension. Okay, let's move on to the antagonist side. For indications for these medications, let's have a junk pile where a flock of albatrosses live at the top for hyperaldosteronism. 
Their nest is actually made from a blood pressure cuff for hypertension, which is the main indication. Now, in the nest, there's a couple of eggs with cysts on them for polycystic ovarian disease, and nestled amongst them is a water balloon for edema. For the drugs in this class, let's use a snail with a spiral shell for spironolactone, and it's got a plier clamped to it for a pleronone. To get to those yummy eggs, it's crashing through a heart-shaped wall to help you remember it can be used to prevent cardiac remodeling after an MI. For the major side effects, let's have a large banana sticking out of the side of the junk pile for hyperkalemia. It's got a sticker of a heart with an ECG tracing on it to help you remember hyperkalemia can lead to arrhythmias. The other two stickers have crossed out organs. One is a pancreas and the other is a kidney. This will help you remember hyperkalemia is especially common in those with diabetes and renal impairment. Next to the banana is a discarded bra to help you remember these medications could cause gynecomastia in men due to their anti-androgenic side effects. Finally, let's have a soda can full of acidic soda for metabolic acidosis. All right, as a quick recap, mineralocorticoids are normally secreted by the adrenal cortex in response to elevated levels of angiotensin II. It decreases potassium blood levels, but increases sodium levels, along with blood volume and blood pressure. Fludrocortisone, the most commonly used mineralocorticoid receptor agonist, can be used in conditions where the level of mineralocorticoids in the body is lower than normal. On the other hand, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, such as spironolactone and aplerinone, are used in conditions where we want to antagonize the effects of aldosterone, like hypertension and edema. But wait, there's more! Here's a mind map with all of the mnemonics. Go ahead and pause the video so you can test yourself to see what you remember. Stay tuned for the answers after the credits. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.